On Wednesday evening, I feel a twinge of pain in my chest. I try to ignore it. I get chest pain often. I push on. I reach for an item with my left arm. As I extend my arm, pain shoots through my forearm. I touch the painful area. The only thing I feel in that part of my arm are veins and bone. I touch a vein. Electricity-like pain races up my arm. I ignore the symptom. I also notice I am very short of breath. I think to myself, I must be tired. I decide I should go to bed. The next day, my left arm, the arm which houses my pick line, is slightly discolored. It is mildly swollen. The veins in my left forearm ache with pain. I am suspicious there may be a blood clot. I ignore my symptoms. Maybe they will go away. Perhaps I am just imagining everything. The following day, my left arm is significantly swollen and noticeably discolored. I asked my dad if he can see a difference in my two arms. He said my left arm is darker than my right and my left arm is swollen compared to my right. I decide I will continue to fight through the symptoms. Soon though, I am extremely short of breath and very dizzy. While standing, I lose control of the left side of my body. I crash to the ground. After a few seconds, I am able to regain composure of the left side of my body. I am in a panic. This episode may have been a transient ischemic attack. Translation, a section of my brain lost blood flow for a few seconds. It is like having a very brief stroke. But once blood flow is restored, everything goes back to normal. I am concerned part of the blood clot in my arm may have broken off and traveled to my brain. Praise God, it was probably only a tiny clot. A larger blood clot could have caused a full-blown stroke. I go inside and tell myself I need to go to the emergency department. I make objections. It is Friday. The emergency department will be very busy. I plead with myself to stay home. The pain in my chest grows. With each inspiration, a very small area of my chest feels as though it is being squeezed. I know this pain. It is a blood clot in my lungs. I am happy it is a very small pain. I am relieved it is not causing me to gasp for breath. I had a massive blood clot in my lungs in the summer of 2020. No matter how hard I tried to breathe, it was as if I could not take a breath. My heart raced, sweat covered my body, and I felt as though I was going to die. I was feeling very blessed at this moment. I was not experiencing these severe symptoms. I do a number of things before going to the hospital. I take a shower and gather a few items to take with me to the hospital. I grab a new bag of TPN. I collect some medical supplies. Very slowly, I am ready to travel to the hospital. When I arrive at the hospital, it is packed with people. I am bummed. It is going to be a while to be seen. I estimate it will be three to four hours before I will get a room in the emergency department. While waiting, a nurse practitioner comes out to the waiting room to interview patients. I explain to him I thought I was having blood clots. He says he will order some blood work and imaging. He leaves. A short while later, I'm taken to a room behind the triage area and have an EKG done. I am promised blood work will soon be done. I go back to the waiting room. After waiting three hours, two resident doctors from my primary care clinic arrive. They inform me they are taking over my care. Since I cannot have a CT scan with contrast, Due to an iodine allergy, I'm going to be admitted to the hospital to have a VQ scan done. This scan uses a radioactive dye to check for blood clots in the lungs. 
The scan cannot be done until the morning. A room in the hospital is being requested. The resident doctors interview me. They just begin interviewing me when a phlebotomist shows up to draw my blood. The two resident doctors continue on their lengthy interview and physical examination. They are almost done with their review when a man shows up and says there is a room open for me in the emergency department. One resident doctor carries my ventilator and heater humidifier while the other resident doctor pushes my wheelchair. They set up my medical equipment in the emergency department room. They finish their evaluation and leave. As I sit in my room, I look online. My blood work has started resulting. My D-dimer levels are in. They are elevated. D-dimer is not diagnostic, but if the D-dimer levels are elevated, it indicates the body is creating fibrin. This could be due to surgery, cancer, infection, or from the presence of a blood clot. I am relieved my D-dimer levels are elevated. There is nothing more disheartening than going to the emergency department with a specific ailment, but the lab work or radiology report comes back as normal. I am so happy. This means I will probably be given Lovenox. Lovenox is a medication which is given to break up blood clots. It is given as a subcutaneous shot near the belly button. I absolutely hate Lovenox shots, but at this moment, I desperately want the medicine to break up the blood clot in my pick line. One of the resident doctors comes back a while later. He tells me he's going to order Lovenox. He leaves. About an hour and a half later, the nurse arrives with Lovenox. It is painfully injected into my tummy. It is around 12.30 at night when I get the Lovenox shot. I believe it is around 3 a.m. when the technician from radiology comes to do an ultrasound of my leg. Around 4 a.m. a phlebotomist comes to do more blood work. I drift in and out of sleep through the night. There is a patient near me who screams and violently vomits throughout the night. I turn up the volume on my headphones and try to drown out the noise of the chaotic emergency department. Around 6.30 a.m., the noise in the emergency department decreases. I fall asleep. I sleep for almost four hours. I am resting with my eyes closed when my primary care team arrives. They turn on the overhead lights and my body wakes up. The team discusses with me my medical case. They do a thorough interview and an examination. I am promised I will be moved to a hospital room, but for the moment the hospital is very full, so it may be a while before I get a room. Right after my primary care team leaves, my nurse arrives. Guess what? I am changing rooms. I am excited. I think to myself, oh, a room upstairs in the hospital. How wonderful. I soon find out, no, I am changing emergency department rooms. I am taken all the way from one side of the emergency department to the other. I am placed in a lower care unit. My new room is huge compared to the tiny bare shoebox room I had before. The new room has a sink, television, trash can, cabinets, and medical supplies. I feel like I went from the Motel 6 to the Marriott. This is a wonderful improvement. Around 11.30, I'm taken down to nuclear medicine to have a VQ scan done. The scan lasts about 10 minutes. At 1 p.m., I'm given another shot of Lovenex. At 4 p.m., I'm sent down to ultrasound. The first ultrasound I had done was of my left leg. This time, I'm getting my right leg scanned. At 5.25, my nurse bursts into my room. He says, you have been told, 
you are being discharged home, right? I look in astonishment at him. No, I say. I had no idea I was being released. The nurse says, yes, I'm going to print off your paperwork. You will be released home in about five minutes. I quickly grab my phone and call my parents. My mom says she will tell my dad to go to the hospital. He will be there in about 45 minutes. I am very thankful it took my nurse about 15 or 20 minutes to get my paperwork together. I take my time packing up my medical equipment. By the time I get outside, I only have to wait five or 10 minutes for my dad. I am home and very thankful and grateful my pick line was not removed. However, after being discharged, I was not prescribed any Lovenox to break up the blood clot in my arm. The Lovenox vastly improved my symptoms. Now that time is passing, everything is getting bad again. My left arm is very painful. The pain on the right side of my chest is gone, but now I have pain on the left side of my chest. I also have intense pain in my left calf. I am waiting. I have a follow-up appointment with my primary care doctor in a few days. Maybe the doctor can order an ultrasound of my arm to see if there is a blood clot. I am hoping my pick line arm stops hurting and all my other symptoms go away. There is always a chance God can perform a miracle and heal me of this blood clot. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.